If you've been listening to the podcast, you know that on new software, I often enjoy figuring out all the different settings and tweaks that I can change. This video is the culmination of countless hours spent tweaking Bitwarden to bring you the most important settings to be aware of. I hear the lament often that software should be as simple as driving a car, and I wholeheartedly agree. And part of driving a new car is adjusting the seat, connecting your phone to the Bluetooth, and figuring out just how good the brakes really are. And just like you'd put a new car through its paces, you will want to know which tires to kick on Bitwarden. Since Bitwarden functions with two different components, this is going to be broken down into tweaks done to the server itself and the clients that connect to it. Here we'll be diving a bit more in depth into changing their actual functionality. Going over the following settings is how we take responsibility for knowing the tool that we're using and using it well. Just like how taking a couple minutes to get your new car ready to drive will make the ride that much more enjoyable, let's take a couple minutes to get Bitwarden ready to use. The first part of the settings that we're going to go over are the administrative settings on the server itself. This is actually accessed through adding onto the URL. First, we take the URL and change it to slash admin. This will take us to the authentication prompt. After logging in using that administrative token, I now have access to all the administrative settings on the server. The main one we want to focus on is allowing new signups, which we can uncheck to prevent any additional signups from occurring. After that, make sure to save your changes and you will get a pop-up saying that it has been saved. Now we can log into the typical vault and go through its settings. In the settings in the top right, we have numerous options on what we would like to change, if anything. The most notable one here is the vault timeout, which can be configured on the web UI as I am right now. Uh, we can also target the vault timeout action as in what action it takes when the vault does timeout, whether it gets simply locked or if it gets logged out entirely. Note that lock is typically going to be sufficient for any end user devices. This setting is also in the mobile and the add-on clients. Uh, under security, we have the vault timeout option. Next, you have the option to unlock with a pin, which you can set a pin code to unlock your add-on instead of unlocking with the master password. A couple other settings to be aware of in the add-on are going to be under the options section. The first several here are going to dictate which passwords get matched to a certain domain when you visit the website. We can also set the time in which the clipboard uh, removes the password that is stored on it. Another option that should be obvious here is the dark theme. Lastly, while the add-on as well as the mobile application have the change master password option, uh, this will direct you towards your web vault itself. This means that the only place you're ever going to be changing your master password is on the web UI. And changing your master password will mean that all of your clients, the add-on and mobile versions, will have to have the new master password re-entered in order for it to continue syncing after the master password has been changed. These are the several weird tips that will actually help you in your everyday life. If you found a way that Bitwarden has made managing passwords easier, or if you have any questions about it, visit us at rcompose.com. And if you're ready to get started with Bitwarden, you can sign up for a free trial of your own R-Compose instance today at rcompose.com.